the wreckage of an airplane that exploded in the sky was falling on the island. An explosion rang out among the trees, scaring away birds. A submarine floated on the surface of the water nearby. Someone on board said less was to be expected from the Delro family's strength, and private defensive weapons were indeed set up on this island. Tilly's said, luckily Ling Si was able to find out about it beforehand, so they didn't get blown to pieces. Two hours ago, the protagonist said the general sent him a message saying that they had discovered defensive weapons on the island, and it was dangerous to invade the island's airspace. Ruko asked what they should do. He asked if they should turn around right now. Stillwaters said no, looking out the window. Turning around, he said with a confident smile that they could ditch this airspace. Tilly's, raising an eyebrow, said to use the small submarine that was in the airplane to escape beforehand and use the airplane as bait. It really is a scheme for the incredibly rich. Tiana smiled awkwardly. Opening one eye, she looked up, noticing something. A dark pegasus was flying in the sky, and she said, it looks like Ling Si has done well. The protagonist, looking at the dialogue box, said they had disabled all the detectors in the area, and they were now free to disembark. Tilly's, frowning unhappily, asked why only he could use summons in the real world and their pets and mounts were never successfully summoned. The protagonist said he had a special awakening rate. Turning around, he asked Stillwaters if it bothered him that his plane was destroyed. Stillwaters said, it's fine because it's just a means of transportation. Ling Si closed his eyes and thought that the world of the rich is really lavish. Tilly's asked what they will do now that they have made it to the shore. The protagonist said the general sent him new information and a map of the island, and Delro Mansion is in the center of the island. He said their target is there, but there is one situation that could be good or bad. Stillwaters and Coco Lai looked at him questioningly, frowning. Ling Si said, according to the information he received, there will be a banquet at Delro Mansion today. Coco Lai, rubbing her chin thoughtfully, said it was bad for her, Tiana and Stillwaters because there might be people among the guests who could recognize them, and it might interfere with their infiltration plan. The protagonist thoughtfully agreed and said, they need to plan carefully. A dialogue box appeared from his phone screen and he exclaimed that they had received encrypted data. Ling Si looked at his phone screen in shock. Delro Mansion stood surrounded by rocks, occupying a huge area. Huge futuristic helicopters that looked like quadrocopters were landing on the ground, and someone announced that they had received permission to land from Delro. The man with a wand in his hand replied, Received. Many people got out of the helicopters and a voice asked the guests to go inside. A girl wearing a masquerade mask over her eyes greeted the mayor of a certain city, dressed in a cylinder, and the president of the Chamber of Commerce. Noticing something, she raised her eyebrows high. In front of her were Dark Feather, Tilly's, Ling Si, and Ruko, dressed in stylish suits and hats. She asked who they were. The main character had glasses with colored lenses on his face, and he said with a graceful smile that they were the band that was invited to perform here today. The girl asked him to show her invitation and the protagonist showed her his phone screen. A while ago, Ling Si exclaimed in amazement that the general had told them to sneak into today's banquet disguised as a music band. He said, originally, the band Summer, who was supposed to perform today at the mansion, had already been arranged so they could use their identity without any worries. The protagonist asked who among them could play musical instruments. The girl let the protagonists inside and thought that the members of the summer band were not so beautiful in her memory. The protagonists found themselves in a luxurious room with a grand piano, and the man asked them to wait in that room. He said he would notify them when it was time for their performance. As they left, he said they would be right outside the door and they could just tell them if they needed anything. Dark Feather said they are being watched and it seems like the artists here don't get the VIP treatment. Ling Si took his hat off his head and said the guests invited to Delro's banquet this time are all upper class and this level of scrutiny is expected. He took off his glasses and told them to stay here and explain the situation to Stillwaters, while he would sneak inside the mansion and find out Narlo's location. Tilly's asked if he could handle it alone. The protagonist took off his white jacket and with a smile told her not to worry because he was confident in his stealth skills. He activated ghostly garb, becoming invisible. Ling Si walked out through the window. Jumping up, he thought about the guards being everywhere. Looking at the huge garden in front of him, he thought that the size of this mansion matched the reputation of the Delro family. Ling Si thought, Narlo must be hidden in this mansion, and he needs to save time. Glimpsing among the crowd, he thought that these guards must be awakened and it wasn't safe to barge in. Shrouded in dark purple energy, he decided to use Overlord Concealment and ran along the mansion. 
The protagonist, running past a room where a magician was pulling a rabbit out of a hat, thought that this room must be for guest performers too. In the next room, women dressed as maids were wielding dishes, and he realized it was the kitchen. Looking up to the second floor, he saw a girl changing clothes and realized it was the guest room. Standing on the roof of one of the buildings, Ling Si thought, all the lower floors are ordinary rooms, and it looks like he will have to explore the upper floors. Noticing something, he raised his gaze upwards. The protagonist thought that there were noticeably more guards there than anywhere else, and it was very suspicious. The man said the banquet was about to begin. He asked if they were ready. The other man replied yes, identifying him as Butler Charles. Charles was an older man with long gray hair and beard, and he had a monocle on his face. It was obvious from his figure that he had a muscular body under his black suit and tailcoat. He said the master would also be coming today, so they should make sure that all security measures were taken. The men obeyed. Ling Si, sitting on the roof and listening to their conversation, wondered if the master they were talking about was Narlo's father. Charles looked up. The master had hurriedly run away, and one of the men asked what was wrong. Charles said he needed a list of all the guests except all the VIPs. He ordered to check each of them one by one. The man in the dark suit opened the door abruptly and apologized and said, for security reasons, he needed to confirm the number of people. Tilly's, Ruko, and Darkfeather were in front of him, and the man said they were one person short. Walking down the steps, the main character, dressed in a blue shirt and red glasses, said he was stepping aside to set up his instruments. In his hand was a purple bass guitar. Charles, folding his hands behind his back, said he had moved their performance to the very beginning of the banquet. With a cold-blooded smirk, he asked them to follow him to the stage. The protagonist walked onto the stage under the spotlight. A girl in the crowd exclaimed that it was starting. A guy in glasses asked if it was summer. A girl in an expensive dress said they were much cuter than she had imagined them to be. They raised their hands in the air, and the protagonists announced, let's start the banquet with a high. The main character smirked, holding a guitar in his hand. Tilly's held a microphone in her hand. Dark Feather picked up an electric guitar. Ruko, twirling sticks in his hands, sat down at the drums. They were all dressed in dark blue shirts, with holographic screens in front of their eyes that looked like glasses. They began to play their instruments. The bright light of the stage spotlights could be seen from far away. Some time ago, Ling Si asked who among them knew how to play musical instruments. Tiana looked up thoughtfully and said she knew how to play the piano a little. Ruko said, he doesn't know how. Dark Feather said, GG. Tilly's, smiling smugly, said she can't play any instruments, but she can sing a few songs. The protagonist raised an eyebrow nervously, wondering if they would be cracked if they pretended to band. He thought about the general not being reliable at all. Stillwaters smiled as he adjusted his glasses and said there was no need to worry because the clothes they were wearing had hidden functions. He said he could look at the device on his wrist. A holographic interface appeared in front of Ling Si and he exclaimed that this device has options for scripts to use. Stillwaters said this garment has the latest high-tech nanochip simulation of life and career scenarios built into it, and it is far ahead relative to similar products. He said there are options inside to simulate hundreds of life skills, and by activating them, it can help the wearer's body learn the skills of their chosen profession faster. Stillwaters said with these suits, they can all become musicians. Ling Si said, this is impressive. Tilly's, shifting her eyebrows, asked if he was a scientist. Stillwaters, correcting his glasses, said it is also the newest product introduced by the company he is partnered with, and because of their identities, Coco Lai and Tiana are not suitable for this mission. He said, it's up to them. Ruko exclaimed about how he wants to be a drummer to play the rhythm of the earth. Tilly's asked with a smile if the simulation would improve her singing skills. Ling Si said with a confident smile, they would have no problem with this treasure. He said, to the manor, save Narlo. Tilly's sang on the stage with her hand up in the air. Ruko was beating a drum, smiling broadly. Dark Feather played the guitar with a focused face. Ling Si was playing the guitar with a focused face. Charles stood in front of the numerous monitors. He looked at the screens with a slight smile. Noticing something, he opened his eyes tensely. Tilly's said, let's keep the excitement going. A cloud of breath rose above the stage. The crowd shouted happily that these stage effects were incredible. Tilly's told Ling Si to hurry up while they hold the fort. With a smirk, she said, we need to rescue the hanging car. A while ago, Ling Si returned to the room with the rest of the team through the window. They asked if he had learned anything about Narlo. The main character said yes. He said he was on the top floor of the mansion and they would take action tonight. Ling Si stood in front of a complex scientific apparatus. Behind him, there were unconscious guards lying on the floor. 
he thought, that's right, and although the model is quite primitive, it is indeed a narlo control device, the neuro control device, frowning. The protagonist thought he had read about it in a scientific journal in his past life. He pressed a few keys on the keyboard. Several dialogue boxes appeared on the holographic interface in front of him with Narlo's portrait. Links, he thought. It contains Narlo's user ID information, and the date matches the day he met the fake Narlo. It looked like he had been controlled for a very long time. Looking at the screen, Links, he thought that the last entries said he had been transported, but it didn't say where. A voice from behind said he seemed to be very interested in their young master. The main character turned around and the man said he had easily defeated his awakened security team, and he didn't seem to be an ordinary person. Charles said this was Narlo family territory. He told him not to be too presumptuous here, calling him an intruder. Charles told Ling Si he's quite skillful. He said the fact that he dared to invade the Delro family mansion alone was not surprising. Charles said although he is not his opponent, but is the old butler of this mansion, he cannot let him do whatever he wants. Holding a walkie-talkie in his hand, he said he knows for sure that he does not act alone, and if he presses that button, even if he can escape from him, his comrades will immediately find themselves surrounded by the entire awakened security team of this mansion. With a sinister smirk, he asked what he would choose, escape or surrender with his comrades. The protagonist took one look at him and said he chooses to finish him off before he pressed that button. He immediately rushed into the attack, enveloped in purple energy. Charles said with a smirk, interesting. He stomped his foot on the ground with force, shattering the floor. Using a backstab, Ling Si was behind his back, but a stone barrier appeared between them, emerging from the floor. Charles said, I've seen through you, raising his walkie-talkie. He told him not to underestimate this old man. Ling Si opened his eyes tensely, sweat running down his face. Charles said he's too rash. The voice on the walkie-talkie asked him if he needed anything. To the protagonist's surprise, he replied that he needed a hearty meal sent to his room. Ling Si asked in surprise about dinner. Charles, smiling good-naturedly, told him that he had passed his test. He called him Master Ling Si from the Narlo game. The people behind Tilly's and the others thanked them for their performance. They asked them to follow them because it was an order from above. Tilly's and Dark Feather tensely remained silent. They walked up the steps inside the building. The door opened and Tilly's called out to Ling Si. The protagonist was sitting at a table eating, and Tilly's exclaimed irritatedly as she slapped her hands on the table that he was actually eating and drinking here. She said they had been working hard on the performance to provide him with a cover. She asked what happened to the communication to bring Narlo back. Ling Si asked her to calm down and pointed a finger at Charles, who was carefully wiping his mouth with a handkerchief. Charles said everyone must be tired after the performance. He suggested having dinner first. Tilly said he was the butler. Charles said he had seen their performance just now, and it reminded him of old Narlo, who loved music. Tilly's, raising an eyebrow, asked about the old Narlo. Butler said he had watched Narlo grow up. Lowering his gaze, he said he too had a hard time with Narlo being controlled. Compared to the other heirs of this house who agree to live according to the old master's orders, Narlo has always been against it. The old master created the current situation to punish him for his disobedience. Ling Si said he didn't tell him where Narlo was until everyone came here. He asked if he could tell him now. Charles said he just didn't want him to do a rash act. He said Narlo had often spoken of him as an incredible, intelligent, and far-sighted man who, however, had let overconfidence in his own abilities cloud his judgment. Tilly's, smirking, nodded and said it was true, and Narlo had indeed described him well. Everyone else nodded in agreement as well. Charles said originally, the lives of the Delro family members were planned out in advance, but Narlo was torn between rebellion and obedience, making his life in the family extremely miserable until he met them in the game. He said every time he met Narlo in the game, he excitedly shared interesting things about them, and he had never seen such light in his eyes. Charles said Narlo really loved them, frowning. He told them no matter how great a danger they face this time, they must get Narlo out of there. Ling Si asked where Narlo was located. Charles replied, in the secret underground base of this mansion. Tilly's raised her fist and said she doesn't care what that base is and they will just do it. Charles said it is not as simple as she thinks it is. He said he doesn't know how they got to this island, but they must have noticed that there are military defense weapons installed on this island. The protagonist asked if he meant to say that the underground secret base was connected to the military. Tilly's, Ruko and Dark Feather looked at him in amazement. Charles closed his eyes and said was all he could say. After all he was the butler of this mansion. Tilly's asked what this had to do with saving Narlo then. 
Charles, frowning, said the family and the military were researching a type of weapon in an underground secret base, and he himself was not sure what the weapon was, but it was protecting the base. Remembering Narlo's back, he said Narlo is banished to that base. Rising from his seat, Ling Si said, he understood. He said, in order to save Narlo, they must challenge this military weapon. And this was the reason why he didn't want to let him act alone, for being his chess pieces to save Narlo, of course, the more of them the better. The protagonist said, the military and the Delro family are behind this, both of which are very dangerous forces. Charles, folding his hands in front of him, said he hopes they understand his situation. After all, he allows them to infiltrate their territory and even tells them all about it. He said these actions of his are basically already a betrayal to the Delro family, including betraying him, and this matter must be treated with caution. Ling Si told him that he is worrying too much. He said if he really sincerely wants to save Narlo, they are allies, and so they are willing to be his chess pieces. The protagonist asked him to tell them where the underground secret base is. Tilly's, Ruko and Darkfeather stood with serious expressions on their faces. Ling Si said they wanted to break the weapons that Narlo was exercising. After a while, they found themselves near a huge door. The door started to rise and Charles said it was one of the entrances to an underground secret base. Going down the spiral staircase, Ruko said we're very deep. Charles said this is one of the passageways that doesn't have an elevator, so it's rarely used, and it would be safer if they went down here. Tilly's asked if Stillwaters knows their next course of action. Ling Si said he had already told him everything and also sent the location tracking of their operation. Tilly's asked if he had any ideas about this military weapon. Ling Si was quiet for a while and said, play it by ear, I guess. He thought, the reason why the military agreed to help him this time must be because of this weapon. One of the workers noticed Charles and asked why he went downstairs. Charles said there was a riot upstairs, so he went downstairs to see if anything unusual had happened. The guard asked if there were intruders. Charles said not clear yet, so he went down to look at the cameras just in case because he was worried about Narlo's room. The guard with a smile told him to relax because nothing happened in that sector. He said, after all, the Narlo room can only be accessed through an elevator that won't open without a pass, and on top of that, the outside of the room is guarded by weapons they've developed. The elevator swiftly descended downwards. Ling Si and his team hurriedly stepped out of it. Peeking out from around the corner, the protagonist noticed something intensely opened his eyes. In a room with large blue screens sat a robot that looked like a woman dressed in nun's robes. Its posture looked like it was praying. Ling Si thought, human. The steel door closed. Charles said there was a riot in Sector and more manpower was needed there. He said he would help them monitor the CCTV cameras in Sector D. He said the old master is receiving important guests in Sector and there is not enough manpower there. Charles shouted to them to hurry up and go there. The men obeyed. Charles thought he needed to destroy the CCTV footage showing Ling Si and the others. A dialog box informed him that the CCTV cameras were encrypted and pass identification was required. Charles thought he would take this chance to see the thing the family and the military were working on together. He wondered what kind of weapon it was. Ling Si and the others were watching the robot, peering around the corner. Ruko asked what it was. Tilly's said it looked like a woman from afar, but its body structure was not human-like. The protagonist frowned, thinking that he had never seen such a human in his past life. The robot folded its hands in prayer, and Ling Si wondered if it was a robot. He told the others in sign language to keep quiet and follow him, because she might have fallen asleep. The others responded in sign language, they understood. Looking at the interface next to the door, the protagonist thought about how to open that door. Charles told him through a dialog box that this door required a password. He asked to wait for a minute while he helped them decipher it. Tilly's asked how he knew what they were doing. Charles replied, through the security cameras. He said since he couldn't use his pass, decrypting the password would take some time, about 15 minutes. He opened his mouth in surprise. A robot appeared behind the protagonist's back, and Charles shouted to him to turn around. The robot pointed his palm forward, and yellow energy shot out from his fingers. Ling Si and the others dodged the blows of yellow energy. Tilly's exclaimed in surprise that she could use the awakened one's powers. The robot's hands were enveloped in yellow energy. Tilly's wondered if this was the real world. She asked how this guy was different from the game boss. Ling Si thought, from the outside it looks like a giant robot, but it can use the powers of the awakened. He wondered how the powers in the game manifested on a real robot. Charles, looking at the dialogue boxes, agreed and said it was too mysterious. He wondered if this was the new world weapon they talked about. 
The giant robot was hitting with yellow energy and the protagonist yelled to everyone not to relax because this was the real world and they would be able to try more after death, just like in the game. Tilly's frowned and clucked her tongue. Ruko dodged a stream of yellow energy. Tilly's called out that it was a game-level monster, but they couldn't use their full powers against it in the real world. Activating Flame Rush, she struck the robot in the arm with the flame. Tilly's said this iron skin was very durable. Several shots hit the robot in the same arm. Dark Feather was holding a blue sniper rifle. Ruko, shrouded in yellow energy, swung his fist. He hit the robot with yellow energy, and the robot closed with his hand. Standing over the robot, Tilly swung her staff shrouded in flame. Activating Flame Slash, she struck the robot in the back with red flame energy. The robot's body was covered in cracks. Charles shouted to the main character that he had deciphered the password. The steel door in front of them slid open. Pushing off the ground, Ling Si jumped towards the robot and shouted that the door was open. Shrouded in purple energy, he told everyone to go inside. The protagonist activated Shadow Ambush, surrounding the robot with purple energy, and said he would hold it back. The purple energy enveloped them both, transporting them to another dimension. The steel door closed. Tilly's, Ruko, and Dark Feather managed to get through the day. Pulling the mask off his face, Ruko exhaled. Tilly's said fighting a monster like that in real life was very exhausting. Ruko asked what was wrong with that robot. He said he thought only players who play Heavenland had a chance to become awakened in real life. Is it now possible even for robots? Ruko asked confused if this was a sci-fi movie, if he was asleep. He asked if his experience was too lacking as a junior high school student. Ling Si told them not to think about it, because the duration of his skills in real life is greatly reduced, and he won't be able to keep it up for long. He said they also can't find out what's going on with that robot now, and they can't waste time. He said saving Narlo is their main goal. Charles thought with admiration that they were able to get away from the military's weapon so easily. He smiled. He thought, these are Narlo's comrades, and he was beginning to understand why he liked them so much. Charles told them that after passing the final passage, they could reach Narlo's room. Looking at the large steel door, Ling Si said, this is where they are keeping Narlo. Frowning, he thought that they had come to rescue him. Narlo, dressed in pajamas with a child's pattern, was sleeping peacefully. Near his face was a small holographic display. Tilly said that he was a good sleeper. Ruko said he didn't look like he was being kept locked up at all. Tilly's loudly told him to wake up. Charles said he was talking about Narlo being exiled, not imprisoned in captivity. He asked them to look at the device on Narlo's ear. The protagonist took the small device from his ear into his hand. Charles said it was a sleeping device and without an antidote nothing could wake him up. Tilly's frowned and said they want him to keep sleeping and the Delro family is cruel even to their relatives. Ling Si noticed that the room started to shake. Tilly's asked if it was an earthquake. The protagonist said it's that robot and she's catching up with them. They asked if they would have to fight her again. Ling Si looked at the device on his wrist. Looking at the dialogue box, he said it was still Waters and the others. He said these were the underwater coordinates of the underground base. The protagonist said still Waters sent the coordinates to the river, and he wants to meet them there. Tilly's asked how they were able to get information about this underground base. She said it looks like they didn't sit idle either. Ling Si asked Charles, based on these coordinates, if he can help them navigate this underground base. Charles said he is trying to do it right now. But this underground base is like a maze divided into many sectors, and it is difficult to navigate through it. He said fortunately, before they left, his other comrades caused some chaos in Sector A. And thus he has an excuse to send some of the guards from that section to Sector A. Charles said there will be far fewer guards on their escape route, but he can still see through the security cameras that this robot is still looking for them. He said the main problem now is how to get Narlo out of here safely. Tilly's, looking at the sleeping Narlo, said if they have to fight this robot again, they will not be able to guarantee its safety. The protagonist lifted Narlo onto his back and said he had an idea. She said he would cover himself and Narlo with a blanket. Tilly's asked what he was trying to do. Ling Si activated ghostly garb, gradually becoming invisible. The protagonist and Narlo on his back became invisible, and Tilly's exclaimed that they had disappeared. Ling Si said this was indeed possible with the ghostly garb skill, and thus he could safely bring Narlo to the assembly point. He asked to lure the robot away from them. The locked steel door stood still. A heavy blow knocked the door out of its place, raising dust. The robot looked inside. Two people ran out in front of it. Dark Feather began firing pistols, and Tilly's attacked her with fire, luring her to go after them. Charles pressed keys on his keyboard. 
he thought one party had to lure that robot to another passage to ensure Narlo could be safely taken up the elevator via the original passage. As he continued to press the keys, he said in his mind to leave all the doors on him. One of the steel doors was unlocked, and it opened. The robot swung a hand shrouded in yellow energy, and Tilly's told her to just follow them. The yellow energy approached them and they bounced to the sides. The yellow energy was destroying the floor and walls around them. Noticing something, Tilly's looked to the side. Noticing firefighting smoke, she exclaimed, It's here. The smoke surrounded the robot. Charles told them to get out of here quickly while the smoke blocked her field of vision, because they too would not be able to withstand such a concentration of carbon dioxide. Tilly's and Dark Feather ran toward the exit, surrounded by smoke. Charles said she'd hold the robot off for a while. Someone said something about them coming back. Turning around, Charles saw Narlo on the back of the main character. He said with relief, it looks like Narlo didn't starve to death while he was locked up. The protagonist said, he seems to be sleeping quite peacefully. Ling Si turned his attention to the footsteps. Charles said, it must be the patrolling guards. Noticing a running figure in the hallway, the guards exclaimed that it was an intruder. In front of them was Ruko, surrounded by yellow energy. The guards asked if they had sneaked into Sector D as well. Ling Si appeared behind them and said, that's right. Ruko and the main character quickly disarmed the guards by slamming them against the walls. Charles watched them, peering out from around the corner. Smiling, he thought he was leaving Narlo to Ling Si. He said he would help them open all the doors and they should successfully escape with Narlo. The main character told him not to worry because he was their important teammate. The submarine was standing next to a giant pipe. Someone said they still hadn't arrived and asked if Ling Si and everyone else had encountered any difficulties. Tiana, standing inside the submarine, looked up. Noticing something, she opened her mouth. An explosion erupted inside the tube. From the explosion appeared, Dark Feather, Tilly's, Ruko, and Ling Si with Narlo on his back. Tiana exclaimed that they had come. A guard in a dark suit and masquerade mask shouted about the intruders hiding nearby and shooting arrows. He ordered to find them. Coco Lai, shooting yellow magic arrows, said their numbers were increasing and sooner or later their position would be discovered. Stillwaters, looking at the holographic interface, said to retreat. They reached the shore, and he said Ling Si should be coming out soon. A drone that looked like a quadcopter appeared above them, and Coco Lai exclaimed that it was a UAV. Stillwaters said they would find them soon, so they should return immediately. Noticing a large wave in the sea, Coco Lai asked him what it was. A huge green submarine surfaced and they exclaimed that it was a military submarine. The submarine opened fire with machine guns. Stillwaters grabbed Coco Lai's hand and told her to run. A stream of blue energy flashed through the air. There was an explosion in the sky. Knight of the Glorious appeared in front of them, riding a horse. The guards told the guests not to panic and asked them to proceed to the evacuation plane in an orderly manner. The helicopters lifted off the ground into the sky one by one. The guard asked the man in the cylinder to go to the helicopter. The man told the general that this turmoil was indeed unexpected. He asked him to go along with him to avoid the inconvenience. The man in the cylinder turned around. Only his silhouette was visible in the darkness. He looked up silently. Several people looked at the holographic screen, and a gray-haired man exclaimed about it being a skill of an awakened, a summon. They exclaimed that this was the first time they had seen a summoning skill of this level in the real world. The sword in the hands of Knight of the Glorious was enveloped in blue energy. Standing on the shore in front of the military submarine, he swung his sword. The person inside the submarine ordered the activation of the electronic shield. A yellow protective barrier surrounded the submarine, and blue energy struck it. Shots flashed past the knight flying on the Pegasus. Machine guns fired at him from the submarine, and there was an explosion in the air. The submarine inside was colored with red light, and an alarm went off. A man asked if the vessel was damaged and if they had hit their target. There was an explosion inside the submarine and the crew yelled that the submarine's launcher was severely damaged. Knight of the Glorious stood amidst the explosions with his sword resting on his shoulder, and they said this summon looked exactly like the monsters from the game. The protagonist and his team watched through a holographic screen. Ruko said it's impressive, and the power of the Knight of the Glorious is no different from the game. Tilly's thought that normal players can only use a fraction of the power proportional to their awakening rate in real life, and it's impossible to materialize it completely. But when they saved her sister a year ago, Ling Si could already fully materialize Knight of the Glorious in real life. Looking at the main character's back, she thought that he was indeed an awakened who could use 100% of his power. The submarine with the main characters approached the shore, and they shouted to Stillwaters and Coco Lai to get into the ship as soon as possible. 
Coco Lai asked Ling Si how he managed to materialize Knight of the Glorious completely. The protagonist told them not to worry about it for now and climb into the ship. Stillwaters asked where Narlo was and if they had gotten him out. Leng Si pointed his finger back and said he was sleeping peacefully. Narlo was lying on the floor covered with a blanket. Stillwaters exclaimed in amazement that he could sleep in a situation like that. Ruko said it looked like some sort of soporific device had been used on him, and he needed an antidote to wake up. Tiana, looking up thoughtfully, asked if he felt under the Sleeping Beauty's magic. Ruko and Ling Si turned around questioningly and Tiana said she had just heard of such a device. Stillwaters said thoughtfully that he'd heard about it from some of the others, and it seemed that he'd also heard about a device called Sleeping Beauty's Magic. Tilly's asked if it must have something to do with the story of Sleeping Beauty. With a smirk, she said Narlo needed his prince to wake him up. Looked at the protagonist, she exclaimed, she understood. Tilly's said, he is his master. Ling Si raised an eyebrow and asked what she was talking about. The guards in dark suits located their submarine and said it was definitely an invader's vehicle. The submarine went underwater and they bellowed. One of the guards asked what was wrong with their submarine. Looking at the military submarine snapped in half, and they said frustratedly that it had broken. Knight of the Glorious appeared next to the main character's submarine. Ling Si told him to make sure not to cause casualties. The knight told him not to worry because he showed mercy, and there won't be any casualties. The protagonist praised him for his good work and asked him to check if there were any enemy submarines nearby. Knight obeyed. Ling Si said Knight of the Glorious is too strong, and he is capable of even operating underwater. He said unlike them, Knight can move freely underwater because he doesn't need to breathe. Ruko said with a smile, It seems to him that the coordination between Ling Si and Knight of the Glorious is getting better and better, as if the two longtime friends are working together. Ling Si asked if that was the case. Knight said after observing for a long time, he found that they were not being pursued by submarines. Ling Si told him to go back. Ruko said, There seems to be chaos going on in the mansion. Tilly's said with a smirk, it looks like their invasion has ruined their holiday mood. Numerous helicopters were flying above the mansion, surrounded by spotlight. A large wave rose on the surface of the water. Tilly's asked what the sound was. Coco Lai said the aura was fierce. Narlo slept restlessly, frowning and sweating. One of the helicopters was flying in the sky. The man in the cylinder asked Charles on the phone why he was so late answering the phone. Charles said he thought it was the work of other enemy families. He said he was attacked by intruders and they took Narlo. The man replied that it had nothing to do with Narlo, and the only thing that mattered was the development of their weapons. A huge robot tried to escape through the steel doors near Charles, and the man said they couldn't let it be exposed prematurely. The morning sun illuminated the island from behind the horizon. The protagonists stood on the shore. One of them said the strength of the little submarine was not enough to get back. Stillwaters said he should have told someone to send an airplane for them. Ling Si, speaking by phone, said the information had been sent. He asked if there was really nothing the military could do. The protagonist hung up the phone. Tilly's asked if the military could find a way to unlock this soporific device. The protagonist said no. He said the antidote for this device was set during the development of the device, and they must find the corresponding solution. Tiana said the Delro family's technology has always been highly classified, and they would have a hard time finding the settings for the development of the device. Stillwaters said there must be some way, and they would first go back and use all of his company's connections for research. A blue magic circle appeared in front of the protagonist and he said, he too has someone he can ask about this. Tilly's asked where he was headed. Sitting on the Pegasus, Ling Si told them all to go back and take care of Narlo. He said he was going to find the person who has been researching the game in the real world all this time. Perhaps he might know the solution. Looking up, the main character in his mind told Dark Lions to wait for him. He flew in the sky over the evening city. A small boy, pointing his finger at him, told his mother that it was a Pegasus again. His mother told him that he was talking nonsense again. She told him to hurry home because his father was waiting for them to have lunch. The Pegasus disappeared, enveloped in blue squares. Ling Si landed on the roof of a building, looking up at the evening sun. The door opened and the man said it was really problematic. He asked why they had agreed to meet on the rooftop again. Ling Si turned around. Dark lines appeared in front of him and said going up through so many floors was really exhausting. Looking at the sky colored in orange and purple, he said he shouldn't have let him contact Tika because it allowed him to find him so easily. Ling Si said he had something important to discuss with him. Dark lines asked if it had to do with Delro's family. The protagonist was taken aback, smirking. Dark lines told him not to underestimate his ability to gather information in the real world. He said his actions had shaken up the people of the noble circles quite a bit. 
he said he had allowed himself to interfere with the number one family's event in the entire world, and it seemed that Ling Si in the real world was not the most obedient child. The protagonist with a serious face said since he already knows everything, he will get right to the point. He said he has a friend on whom the Delro family's sleeping device was used and he is in a constant state of sleep. Dark Lions closed his eyes with a smile and said he was talking about the youngest son of their family. He said he had dealt with the Delro family before and he remembered his disrespectful behavior. Ling Si exclaimed in amazement, and Dark Lions told him to stay calm. He said it was in the past, and they had a disagreement with the Delro family, and that's why they stopped communicating. Dark Lions said from what he knows about the family, actions like sacrificing family members to protect their interests is their style. He said he only used the sleeping device on his own child, and it proves his hands weren't too heavy. The protagonist asked if he had a solution. Dark Lions asked him if he had discovered anything unusual at the Delro family mansion. Ling Si opened his eyes wide. Remembering the praying robot, he wondered if he was talking about it. He remembered how the general had told him over the phone that he could not disclose information regarding this robot without his approval because it was a condition that the military would not prosecute him for trespassing. Ling Si said he can't tell him about it because he has his own difficulties. Dark Lion said he understands. He told him to just understand the fact that his actions would definitely have consequences. Gloomily lowering his gaze, he said he hopes he is mentally prepared for this because every decision and action he makes will greatly change many facts. Ling Si asked what he wanted to say. Dark Lions rose to his feet and said it was just a warning from someone who has been through this. He told him to follow his instructions if he wanted to save his friend. Ling Si asked what he needed to do. Spreading his palms apart, Dark Lions told him to go back to his game. Dungeon Homeward, Insanity Difficulty Level. In front of Ling Si was a huge creature covered in vines and flowers. Raising its muzzle upwards, Graphite, the herbivorous beast, Homeward Boss, let out a menacing roar. Ling Si, gritting his teeth, thought about why he had told him to return to the game and go through this dungeon. He remembered how Dark Lions had said with a wide smile. He too had his own difficulties and would be notified once he completed this dungeon. The protagonist had told him not to even try to trick him. Holding daggers shrouded in purple energy, he ran to attack. A dialogue box alerted him that he had killed the boss. Ling Si thought, in his past life they raided this dungeon more than ten times, each time with caution. A dialogue box asked the protagonist to collect rewards from the boss. The protagonist thought, in this life going through this dungeon alone seems too easy, and these rewards are not what he needs. Opening his eyes wide, he said, he found it. On the ground in front of him was a green plant growing from the dry soil. The dialogue box read, congratulations on obtaining the item homecoming grass, triggering an additional plot mission homeward. Taking the plant in his hand, Ling Si thought that Dark Lions was right, and the homeward dungeon on insane difficulty did indeed open an additional plot mission. He thought that he hadn't discovered it in his numerous attempts in his past life. The dialogue box says, Homecoming grass, a plant that grows in the hometown, filled with memories and emotions. Holding it can evoke a warm feeling. Hand it over to someone lost. Let the warmth of the past guide people on their way home. Ling Si wondered what this had to do with Narlo's rescue. A multi-story building stood amongst the green trees. There was a knock on the door and someone asked him to enter. The protagonist found himself in a laboratory full of white jar cabinets and wondered if this was his home. Dark Lions, dressed in a white lab coat, was looking through a microscope. He said it was his friend's lab. Lifting the goggles from his eyes, he asked how it went, and if he had completed the dungeon as he had told him. On the dialogue was the achievement for Homeward Dungeon Clearing Record. The protagonist asked how completing the dungeon had anything to do with Narlo's awakening. Dark Lions told him to look carefully. The protagonist watched in amazement as blue energy appeared in front of him. The blue energy swirled and gathered in Dark Lions' hand. A round bottle containing the orange potion from the game appeared in his hand. Dark Lions asked if he had never thought of bringing items from the game into the real world. Lynx, he said, according to the limits of Awaken's abilities, bringing game items into the real world is impossible. Dark Lion said was just the official explanation, and for them, awakened high-level players, breaking that limit was possible. He said it was the result of his experiments. Ling Si, shocked, couldn't believe his eyes. Dark Lions held the potion up and said, every time he tries to drink it, it disappears. He said, it's because his awakening rate is only 99%. Looking at the main character, he said he was 100% awakened. Dark Lions tossed him a vial of purple liquid. Ling Si caught it, and the man told him to drink it. Dark Lion said it was a medicine he had developed that could temporarily improve his concentration. 
he said materializing game items for the first time wasn't easy, and he only succeeded after hundreds of attempts. He said it would help him reduce the price of failure. The protagonist, gritting his teeth, asked if he knew what it meant. Dark Lines asked if he wanted to save his friend. He said it was different from using awakened energy, and it required him to focus his attention on the object he wanted to materialize. Ling Si tensely closed his eyes, concentrating, and a violet energy surrounded him. Dark Lines told him to believe that it was real. Looking at the swirl of violet energy around him, he thought that he didn't know if he would be able to adapt because it was much more difficult than using awakened energy. He opened his mouth in amazement, noticing something. The main character, shrouded in a purple aura, was holding a green plant and said it wasn't as difficult as he said it was. Dark Lines thought in surprise that he had pulled it off on the first try. The doctor said there was nothing he could do. The patient's physical condition was normal and all they could do was monitor his condition. Chiana thanked him. She looked at the doorknob with a sad face. Looking up with her yellow eyes, she thought that there had been no news from Ling Si for over 24 hours, and she didn't know if he had managed to find a way to save Narlo. Stillwaters looking at the sleeping Narlo said as expected, the usual medical procedures are not helping Narlo. Coco Lai asked if there is still no news from Ling Si. Chiana said no. Coco Lai asked what he is doing. Stillwaters said the doctor just said Narlo's body is healthy and if he just sleeps for a while, there will be no problem. He said, however, if he kept sleeping like that for a while longer, he would be no different from a vegetable. The hooves of a pegasus flashed outside the window. Tiana, noticing it, exclaimed. Seeing Ling Si, she exclaimed that he had returned. The protagonist held a small white jar in his hand and said he had brought medicine to save Narlo. Lifting the head of the sleeping Narlo, he poured the liquid into his mouth. Stillwaters asked where he got this medicine. Frowning, the protagonist replied, in the game. Stillwaters exclaimed in amazement and asked what he meant. Ling Si said it was a long story and he would explain everything to them later when there was a more appropriate time to do so. Coco Lai, frowning, asked why he was being so mysterious. She asked, is it really from Heavenland? Narlo slowly opened his eyes and coughed, choking on the medicine. Coco Lai exclaimed at the fact that he was awake. The protagonist exclaimed with a smile that it actually worked. Coco Lai exclaimed that this medicine was really effective because he woke up immediately. She asked the main character how he solved this sleeping device. Ling Si said he wasn't sure himself, but he was glad that Narlo finally woke up. Narlo, rubbing his eyes sleepily, asked if it was Ling Si and why he was here. The protagonist said, he doesn't seem to remember anything. He asked him if he remembered anything about being controlled. Narlo said he remembered that when Ling Si called him out on the Guild War, he decided to immediately go into the game and respond. He said someone ambushed him and he didn't remember anything about what happened after that. Narlo asked if his father had done it. He said using him to deal with Ling Si was really his father's style. The protagonist looked at him thoughtfully. Tiana told Narlo not to think about it anymore. She said they were able to bring him back from there and everything is fine now because he is with them. Stillwaters agreed with her and told him that he could stay in his house from now on. Narlo exclaimed about it being Tiana, Stillwaters and Coco Lai. He said they are not much different from their avatars in the game. Stillwaters said there's a lot of co-opus between the game and reality, so it's much more convenient to use a more realistic model. Narlo exclaimed about Ling Si being as beautiful as he is in the game. The protagonist exhaled and said, it looks like he's fine. Narlo asked how he cracked that sleeping device's sleeping beauty's magic. Everyone except Tiana exclaimed in amazement that it was indeed called Sleeping Beauty's Magic. Tiana said she remembered the name correctly when she had seen similar popular scientific products. Narlo said, it was originally an ancient aromatherapy created to make it easier for people to fall asleep, and then it was refined into a device formed by their family's scientific research team, and was released to the market long ago. He said, it was later reconstituted for his family to control others, and the antidote is a kiss from someone important to him. Everyone looked at him in amazement. The main character angrily asked what the antidote was. He exclaimed that it is completely from a fairy tale. Narlo said with a smile that the theory was that kissing someone important to him would cause the brain to release dopamine for a short period of time, and that's why it was an antidote. He playfully asked, since he was awake, did that mean Ling Si did something similar? The protagonist firmly shouted no. Stillwaters told Narlo to stay here for now. Narlo agreed with a smile and thanked him. Tiana said Tilly's dark feather, and Ruko promised to check on him after they were done with school and work. She suggested having a nice dinner here tonight. Ling Si declined and said he had some things to do first. Coco Lai said irritably about him being too boring. Dark Lines pressed a button on his phone. 
He asked Ling Si if his medicine had worked. Ling Si replied that he called to thank him because Narlo had woken up. Dark Lions grinned and said he didn't need to thank him because it was all thanks to him. He said if he hadn't brought gaming items to real life, he would never have been able to make it a panacea. He said, this time he saw Ling Si perform a miracle again. The protagonist said, this is too unrealistic. He asked if it was true that only he could do it. Dark Lions said, according to the information from his research, yes, and he is a unique person. Ling Si wondered if it was related to his rebirth. Dark Lions said he should remind him that the ability to materialize game items is related to the boundary between the game world and the real world, so he should use this ability with caution, because they don't know what it knows for the future. Ling Si said he had another question. He asked how he knew homecoming grass could be used to create his panacea. Dark Lions said he would understand after he went through the homecoming grass quest. He said he might be able to see his destiny and the answer he wants from it. Facing the huge monster, Ling Si said he came again. Homeward Dungeon, Insane Level Difficulty. Daggers appeared in the hands of the protagonist and told him to let him take the item again for the quest. After a while, a green plant appeared in his hand. The dialog box says, you have accepted the special mission, where is the way home? Please bring homecoming grass back to your hometown. With his eyes wide open in surprise, Ling Si thought of his hometown. He thought, where am I from? The protagonist found himself in a space of bright white light, and his memories rapidly flew in front of him. Ling Si looked around with his mouth open in astonishment. In front of little Ling Si, a woman in a simple dress with white hair knelt down on her knee. She asked with a smile if he wanted to know the answer. Little Ling Si listened to her with his mouth ajar. The woman said he should continue with the game that belongs to him. She said the answer he is looking for is in there. Ling Si opened his eyes in astonishment. The dialogue window asked Ling Si to plant the seedling that guides him. The protagonist's game avatar appeared in front of the ground, which was glowing with a yellow light. He planted the plant in the ground, covering its stem with soil. A dialogue box said, where is the way home? Mission complete. Looking at the glow surrounding him, Ling Si thoughtfully said it was a guiding item. He wondered what Narlo saw after taking it for him to wake up. The peak of the reddish mountain was glowing brightly with yellow light, and the protagonist thought she was right and the answer he wished for might be in play. Ling Si walked forward, surrounded by a cloud of dust. He decided to continue his game and achieve his next goal, the first player of the maximum level. Dungeon Gallery, Dungeon Mission Reception Desk for players above level 90. Several high-level players exclaimed in amazement. A girl wearing mage clothes noticed the black long cloak, pointing her finger forward. The girl exclaimed that it was him, the head of the Penumbra Guild who had defeated Kyujin Shin in the Guild War, Ling Si. The protagonist calmly walked forward with his hands in his pockets. The girl said he hadn't shown up for a long time after the Guild War. The protagonist exhaled and thought it's troublesome to be recognized, but he should get used to it. Standing next to the fountain, he thought that he didn't expect there to be so many people in the high-level dungeons, and it seems that the progress of leveling up is a bit behind in this area. A person in the crowd asked why such a strong player was still wearing such a shabby costume. Another person said it could be his hobby. Looking at the dialogue box, Ling Si thought that he had already seen the game updates in his past life, and maybe it was because of the Guild War to prevent the over-concentration of high-level players. For a more balanced player experience, this game had actually lowered the difficulty of leveling up. Rubbing his chin thoughtfully, the protagonist thought he had spent the past year trying to level up to level 100, and aside from receiving an exclusive reward for the first player to reach level 100, he felt as if he had lost quite a bit. However, compared to the special award for the first player to reach level 100, the Max Level 120 award is a unique title that is given out based on the player's data. This title is also the official award that the game gives out to players, and each player's title and award are unique. After Ling Si became a maximum level thief in his past life, he was given the title Diligent Silent One, probably because he didn't have many friends in his past life and didn't like socializing with other people back then causing him to just silently keep raising his level. Each player's unique title gives various additional attributes. Ling Si, who had reached the maximum level and obtained a title in his past life for a very long time was happy because it was considered one of the few good things that happened to him. Ling Si, smiling, thought about the title and reward he would receive in this life. Hearing a voice, he opened his eyes. The guy with pink hair angrily asked what kind of stupid setting it was. He exclaimed that they were forbidden to accept a mission out of such a small difference, and the dungeon required shooters. He asked if the fact that warriors have a firearms skill branch made them shooters too. The NPC Dungeon Guide, a girl with straight blue hair covering her eyes, 
said with a smile that the firearms proficiency on their team belonged to the warrior class, not shooter, and so they didn't meet the dungeon requirements. Apologizing, she said she couldn't let them accept this mission and asked them to choose another suitable dungeon. The guy grabbed her shoulder and angrily said he had already said although it was of the warrior class, it was also long-ranged. He asked if long-ranged attacks by warriors had become commonplace. She said since it was a long-ranged weapon, it should count as a shooter. The guy said their team needed a tool from this dungeon. The guy with the blonde hair smiled awkwardly and told him that was enough. He asked why don't they bring someone with them who was in the shooter class. He told him not to talk to an NPC who had almost no intelligence. The guy with pink hair said no and they could enter other dungeons that required long range. He asked why they couldn't enter this dungeon. He yelled about their firearms being fully compliant. A guy in the crowd dressed in armor asked what he was arguing with an NPC about. The girl said since the dungeon required shooter's class, he better give up. She suggested going and finding a shooter to join them. She said long range warrior tree players have already completely met the shooter requirement. It's just that the gameplay and concept is different. The guy with dark hair worriedly told the guy with pink hair that everyone is discussing them and they should give up. The guy angrily asked, what do they know? With his jaws clenched angrily, he said only in this dungeon was there a tool he needed. It was very important to him, and he should get it as soon as possible. Someone in the crowd said his team was also facing a similar situation. The dungeon required an energetic fragrance herb in order to accept the mission, and they searched the dungeon for it for half a day until they finally found the strong energetic fragrance herb. However, the NPC guide said it was the wrong item and wouldn't let them accept the mission. It's about the same effect here. He said at that point, they were very angry because they had to spend a very long time to find the energetic fragrance herb. The guy said they couldn't expect programmed NPCs to think and adjust to the situation like humans. He said the NPCs in the game are all brainless and they're wasting their time trying to argue with them. He suggested to post a thread. Ling Si thought with a smile that there was a discussion between the players about NPC intelligence, and it would divert their attention while he found a place with fewer people to come up with some ideas on how to raise his level. Hearing a shout of him pushing her, the protagonist looked in the direction of the sound. A guy with pink hair, angrily punching an NPC, yelled about AI programs annoying him. He asked why they can't be flexible. The NPC girl fell to the ground, and the guy yelled about how she annoyed him. A girl in the crowd yelled about him going too far. A guy in armor asked why he was venting his anger on an NPC. The guy with pink hair yelled for them to shut up and asked what this had to do with them. A girl in the crowd exclaimed in amazement. The guy continued to yell about how they didn't even know how important this tool was to him right now. An NPC shrouded in a green aura rose to his feet behind his back. The boy turned around fearfully. The NPC girl tossed him aside with a slight movement of her hand. The air swirled around her. The guy with blonde hair worriedly called out to the guy who had crashed into someone in the crowd. A man in mage clothes asked what was wrong with that NPC. Ling Si watched the scene, thrown into shock. The guy with pink hair angrily shouted about how an ordinary NPC dared to be so presumptuous. Swinging his pink sword, he shouted, there's even a royal law now. The guy struck the ground with his sword, and the girl NPC jumped aside. She pointed forward with a hand shrouded in green energy. A huge green magic circle appeared behind the guy. The guy gritted his teeth and the green energy surrounded him. Immobilized, he hung in the middle of the magic circle, his arms and legs spread apart. The guy, demanding to let him go, asked what she was trying to do. The girl NPC said this world had its own rules, just as their world had its own rules. Her eye flashed ominously red, and she said they must follow the rules in Heavenland and in this world the final word is not theirs. A vortex of green energy appeared in the palm of the girl NPC's hand, and she said if they were not happy with the rules of this world, they could leave at any time. The green energy ripped the guy's arm off, shattering the steel armor into shards, and the guy screamed in pain. The girl in the maid's robes asked in amazement if it was a bug. She exclaimed that this NPC wanted to kill the player. Once behind the NPC girl's back, he swung his dagger. The girl parried his strike and bounced back. Noticing something, she pressed her lips together. Ling Si used evil spirits and mincibility, and a huge purple evil spirit appeared above the ground. The guy called out to the guy with pink hair. He was holding onto his arm, complaining of pain. The protagonist noticed movement from behind him. Gritting his teeth and turning around, he wondered if his skill was effective against her. Ling Si was looking carefully at the girl NPC beside him. She asked if he was ready. The protagonist opened his mouth in surprise and a dialogue box appeared in front of him. Dungeon Guide has given you a special mission. The guy with pink hair trembled and shook. 
With tears on his face, he said his wife was sick and hospitalized, but her treatment required a huge amount of money, and he couldn't wait any longer. The guy said the only thing he was missing was an item for the mission in this dungeon, with which he could synthesize the equipment his boss needed and get his money. The guy next to him told him not to cry, and he would now go and find a shooter who can go into this dungeon. He said they'll definitely catch up. Ling Si listened to their conversation while standing nearby. The girl said this NPC had also disappeared. The guy in armor next to him said it was the first time he had seen something like this. Looking at the dialogue box, Ling Si thought that there was no information about this special dungeon. Pressing his lips together, he thought, there are only coordinates. He thought this NPC's behavior was definitely not programmed. The protagonist wondered if it was really a bug, since she looked like a real player. He thought that it was very similar to Dumpling's situation. Ling Si pressed the teleport button on the dialogue box and decided to find out what was going on. The protagonist noticed a black mark on the trunk of a tree. He thought there's also a mark there. He remembered the same mark on a manhole on the road. The exact same mark was on the red flag he was passing by. There was a mark inside the mountain gorge, too. Standing in front of a huge tree, Ling Si wondered if there were clues pointing to the way. Turning around, he saw a city with blue walls in front of him. Looking at the dialogue box, he said it was strange because this city was not marked on the map. A lot of NPCs were walking around the city around the protagonist. He thought that the map of this region was definitely not from the new expansion pack, nor was it an unexplored region. Ling Si thought that there were no players in this place, only NPCs. The wind blew, a bell rang in the brick tower. Ling Si looked at the birds flying in the sky. People hurriedly ran inside the buildings. The windows of the houses quickly closed from the inside. The last passerby ran inside the building. Ling Si silently looked around him. The city around him was completely empty. Looking at the large brick building, he asked, Is this welcoming me? The protagonist walked between the rows of benches in the church. Someone told him that he was glad he was able to get here. In front of him stood a man with blue hair who called him a player who helps others for a nothing. It turned out to be a NPC girl, and she asked him with a smile if he was willing to participate in this special mission. The dialogue box said, Do you accept your bet? Two dialogue boxes appeared in front of Ling Si, which he looked at questioningly. The girl with a mysterious smile said, This is an interesting bet. She said, Let this world wait and see it. The protagonist thought that the situation was getting more complicated and there was an NPC in front of him that looked like a real person. He wondered what secrets lurked behind it all. Frowning, Ling Si thought that this world was interesting. He lightly smiled as he pressed his lips together. The dialogue box announced that he had accepted the bet. Above the city, a bright beam of blue light shot into the sky. The city walls began to shake and disappear, losing their color. Ling Si found himself in the blue space. The protagonist turned around and saw a vast blue space in front of him. He wondered if it was space. The dialogue box said, region unavailable, unexplored region. Ling Si thought, as expected, the map says unexplored region. He glanced forward, and a voice welcomed him to the God of Wisdom's betting arena. A figure appeared out of the bright light and called his name. The man composed of the blue space he was in, dressed in purple robes, said he was the guide of this dungeon. Ling Si asked if this was a soul dungeon. The guide replied, strictly speaking, no. He said Heavenland has countless different dungeons, among which are soul dungeons that disappear forever after the player activates them. The guide said this dungeon would only open its doors for him, and it was a unique special dungeon that only belonged to him. Ling Si repeated his words and sweat ran down his face. He thought that he had never heard of this kind of content in the game, even though he had constantly experienced things that ordinary people couldn't imagine. After his rebirth, the protagonist frowned and thought, this time, even he was completely clueless, for in his past life, he had never heard anything about anyone encountering such a situation. He wondered what was going on here. The guide announced that the first round of the God of Wisdom's betting arena was starting. He asked him to listen to the rules of the dungeon. Spreading his arms out to the sides, the guide said he would bet with his levels and undergo multiple betting rounds, and this is a fight for levels. The protagonist frowned gloomily. The guide said the smallest bet is one level, and if his bet wins, he will immediately raise his level according to his bet. In other words, if he bets an amount of one level, he will immediately go up one level after winning. If he bids 10 levels, he would immediately go up 10 levels after winning. The guide said, of course, if he can win, he can lose. After he chooses his bet, a random multiplier from 1 to 10 will be chosen. And if he loses his bet, he will immediately lose the levels placed, the number of which will be multiplied by the multiplier. If he bets one level and the random multiplier is 3, he will immediately lose 3 levels upon losing. 
but if he bets 10 levels and the random multiplier is 10, he will immediately lose 100 levels after his loss. Lynx he said these rules are a bit too ridiculous. He asked if he had the option to opt out. The tour guide apologized with a smile. He said before he completes each bet, he is not allowed to leave this space. Ruko, hitting the ground with yellow energy, used the earth ground fisher skill. Frowning, he looked forward. The monster in front of him made a loud sound, surrounded by yellow energy stones. Tilly's pointed forward a staff shrouded in flames and activated flame blast. A stream of fire rushed forward and exploded, reaching the monster. Ruko, holding the yellow object in his hands, said the material had finally dropped, and they'd collected all the materials Chana had asked for. He said, now all that was left was to finish this dungeon, and if they had planned their teamwork a little better, they could have done it even faster. Tilly's put her hands on her hips and said, she was tired, and if Tiana wasn't paying for it, she wouldn't want to go through this dungeon so many times. Ruko asked what she was talking about. He said if Ling Si was in their place, he would definitely keep researching how to go through this dungeon even faster. Tilly's said with a smirk that then he could go and find his Ling Si if he could. She said no one knows where he went this time. Ruko straightened up and sighed silently. Tiana told him to hurry up and go to the next level, and the sooner they got through this dungeon, the sooner they would be done with the job. Ruko inquired where Ling Si had gone. The guide told the protagonist that until he completes each bet, he won't be able to leave this place. Also, when he leaves after completing all the bets, if he can't complete this entire dungeon, he will be forced to return to this space in the allotted time. He said he would only be able to leave for a while. Ling Si, frowning sternly, thought, this forced dungeon is the same as a high-level weapons mission. Looking ahead, he thought huge gains come with huge risks. The guide said the first betting had already started. He asked him to choose his bet for the first round and enter the number of levels he wanted to bet. The guide reminded him that you could choose from 1 to 10 levels. Ling Si looked at the dialogue box, rubbing his chin thoughtfully. He thought, the punishment for losing is harsh, but if he can win, he can really raise his level to the maximum level. Coming back to his senses, the protagonist thought he might as well take that risk right away. Clicking on the dialogue box, he said he was choosing one level as his bet. He thought he'd probe the betting arena's real playing method. The guide announced that he had chosen one level as his bet, and by chance the multiplier was six. He said if he loses that bet, six levels will be subtracted from his level. The guide looked in amazement in front of him. Some symbol appeared on the scoreboard after the number six. Smiling, he said, that's interesting. The guide said, without further ado, let the first bet officially begin. Win condition, please defeat real phantom within the specified 10 minutes. The guide announced that the countdown starts right now. He wished the protagonist a pleasant mission. A clot of yellow energy appeared behind Ling Si. Turning around, he saw Ruko's black clone in front of him. Ruko used gravity, descent. A huge dark blue sphere of energy appeared in front of the protagonist. Gritting his teeth, he thought that it could even use gravity, and its abilities were indeed copied one to one. Ling Si used maze control, and a fog appeared around him. Ruko lost his target. The main character thought with a smirk, if it really matches Ruko's real strength, then it's quite interesting. He thought that he also wanted to fight the real Ruko. Ling Si jumped out of the mist while holding two daggers. Using backstab, he ended up behind his opponent's back. He struck with his daggers, and Ruko dodged each one. Ruko swung his hand with a sphere of dark energy. The protagonist asked with a smirk if he wanted to use gravity against him again. He used elemental manifestation, water cage. The water enveloped Ruko, immobilizing him. Turning around, Ling Si said, I will lock you up. Ruko burst out of the water bubble with a burst of yellow energy. Shrouded in yellow energy, he greatly increased in size. The protagonist, smirking nervously, said it could even gigantify. The ground beneath his feet began to shake. Looking around, he noticed it was an earthquake. He wondered if it was Ruko's skill. A huge Ruko stood in front of him, swinging a sphere of purple energy. Using gravity, descent, he threw the sphere forward. The violet energy flashed among the stone debris. Ruko looked forward in astonishment. The protagonist, moving lightning fast from side to side in front of him, said if he didn't have lightning speed, he would have been sucked in. Shrouded in electricity, he appeared in the air. Ling Si used elemental manifestation, thunder shash. The purple energy pierced Ruko's shoulder through and through. The guide said with a smile that the betting round had just begun. Ling Si, shrouded in purple electricity, apologized to Ruko. Smirking, he added, even though you're just a phantom. A dialogue box appeared in front of him, and upon seeing it, he opened his eyes in horror. The dialogue box read, Any damage you inflict on the phantom will immediately happen to the real character of the phantom. 
Tilly's waved her red energy staff and shouted that the boss had very little health left. She told Ruko to finish him off. Her pupils narrowed in surprise. Ruko's shoulder had been punctured, and blood was gushing from it. Tilly's, calling out to him, reached out to Ruko, who was falling to the ground. Blood spurted out from Ruko's phantom. Ling Si thought about the fact that any damage he inflicted on the phantom would instantly happen to the real character. His pupils narrowed in horror, and he wondered if this meant that the real Ruko would also be injured. He wondered loudly why such a rule existed. A guide's head appeared out of the blue portal, and he said the name of the game already made that clear. With a smirk, he said, real phantom. That is, according to the name, the phantoms the protagonist fights are real. Ling Si gritted his teeth, and the guide told him that this game was not as easy as he thought. The protagonist's level went up to 107. The guide congratulated him for passing the first stage of the real phantom challenge. He said it took him 5 minutes and 45 seconds and he got 6 levels. The guide said now the second stage of the real phantom challenge begins. He asked what bet he would choose. Ling Si thought, if he's not lying, this dungeon isn't that easy at all. It can directly affect the player's condition, and he wasn't sure what was going on with Ruko right now. Frowning and pressing his lips together, the protagonist thought he was being too passive. The dialog box says, currently unable to use the communication system. Looking at the smirking guide, Ling Si thought that he is completely unable to recognize the situation outside, and the rules of this dungeon are also unclear. He also doesn't know what other hidden rules there are here, and he needs to be even more careful. Gritting his teeth, he thought everything was in his grasp. Looking ahead, the protagonist thought, this is too weird, and he can treat this as a normal dungeon. He thought he needed to get out of here alive. The guide asked about his bet being one again. He said he was very conservative and this time the multiplier was 5. A red fire symbol appeared on the scoreboard. The guide offered to greet the next phantom. A red phantom with a battle staff appeared in front of the main character, and Ling Si realized that it was Tilly's. They stood opposite each other, and the guide announced the start of the second stage of real phantom. Tilly's swiftly rushed forward to attack. She struck with her fire staff, and the protagonist dodged it by jumping up. He saw the flames in front of his face and clenched his jaws. Parrying Tilly's attack, Ling Si landed on the floor. Desperately gritting his teeth, he thought that he could only dodge. He ran forward and thought, regardless of whether or not the rules the guide was talking about were true, he could not injure Tilly's. Resolutely pressing his lips together, Ling Si thought, I definitely can't. Tiana asked Tilly's through the dialogue box what happened. Tilly's called out to her that something had happened. She said she didn't know how, but something attacked Ruko and he died. Tiana opened her eyes in shock. Tiana asked how that was possible, and if it had anything to do with the dungeon. Tilly's, frowning, said, It's impossible because they have been through this dungeon so many times already. She looked ahead and said they should all be careful too, because she had a bad feeling about it. She asked if, for such a strange thing to happen, it could be from Ling Si's side. The protagonist fought in the arena, gritting his teeth. The guide asked, since he wasn't fighting back, if he was thinking of stalling and admitting defeat. He said with a smirk, it's not that simple. Phantom Tilly's appeared next to the protagonist. She swung her flaming staff, and Ling Si dodged it by ducking down. He noticed that the ground beneath his feet was covered in cracks. Tilly's used flaming earth, and flaming pillars of red energy emerged from the ground. Ling Si used elemental manifestation, flame rock fortress, and a flaming pile of rocks appeared among the flames. Hiding inside it, the protagonist thought. He didn't expect Tilly's to be so much stronger at the moment. The last time he had fought her was when they first met. The her now and the her from more than a year ago are at completely different levels. The blue energy was approaching the pile of rocks. The blue energy shot out at a tremendous speed, shattering the main character's stone defenses. Jumping aside, he asked who it was. What he saw once again shocked him. In front of him stood a blue dark feather phantom, holding a sniper rifle. Ling Si thought, why? Looking at his opponents, he wondered why there were two phantoms here. The guide appearing in the air said, he forgot to tell him about the fact that the second stage of real phantom would increase the number of phantoms over time. Ling Si asked how many rules he hadn't told him yet. He shouted about it not being a fair game. The guide with a smirk told him not to get angry. After all, he had told him earlier that this was a dungeon created especially for him. He told him not to think of it as a simple game. Squinting his eyes, he said this was a test for him. Disappearing, the guide said he hoped he could properly enjoy the processes of the game. The protagonist let out a curse, clenching his jaws. Turning around, he saw that the phantoms Tilly's and Darkfeather had rushed to attack. 
Tilly's swung her staff, Dark Feather opened fire with two pistols, and Ling Si dodged, thinking that fighting against Tilly's and Dark Feather at the same time was indeed a bit challenging. Glancing at the timer, he noticed that time stacked. A Narlo phantom appeared in the arena, and a voice announced that the number of phantoms had been increased. 